this video we're going to be talking boost control with the supercharger now Alton Park is in two weeks and I am hoping to finally utilize the supercharger after after nearly a year and a half of fitting the thing to the car um, so if you've seen the previous video you'll see that we've got a a nice shiny new turbo and I'm at the stage where I need to make a new uh, hot side pipe for the intercooler but before I can do that I need to do something with this little plenum off the supercharger now I've already modified it already previously in uh, another video but I'm at the stage now where I need to start the next step of development with this plenum so bit of backstory is uh, we have had the supercharger running before but the supercharger makes quite a bit of boost if memory serves me correctly um, it made in a region of about 18 psi boost which is way 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 too much uh, for what we want to utilize it for don't get me wrong 18 psi of a supercharger would make this car alone very very fun without the turbo so we're going to continue to go down that route until i throw in the towel so here is where we are at is we can't pulley or don't want to pulley the supercharger up or down uh, we can't really go any bigger on the crank uh, and the only small option for the pulley on the charger is a fixed solid pulley and we really want to keep the electromagnetic clutch so what we need to do is that we need to bleed off some boost from the supercharger so um, continued support by a good sponsor of ours um, is GFB. Now I went to NEC Autosport back in January uh, to sort of do a bit of networking and see all the sponsors of the car, Howtech, RWB, GFB and uh, we got chatting about what we needed for the car. I asked for a couple of wastegates. I asked for one to replace the previous branded product that was on there, a certain blue colour. Um, and I also asked for a secondary one for a little experiment. So here is where we are at is uh, I've got two GFB EX38s. As you can see, we've already fitted uh, this one to the, uh, to the manifold. Now we've replaced that as a bit of a um, maintenance if, if you want to call it that because the reason the turbo died at uh, brand Hatch was due to an overboost so we're replacing the wastegate and all of the boost control sort of uh, gubbins over there just to sort of rule it out and then my plan is to use this second gate and uh, weld it to this plenum attach it to this plenum and then the idea would be is uh, we can open this wastegate up and then bleed off boost that's being produced by the supercharger. Now, unfortunately, the Howtech Elite 1500 that we are running on this, uh, we have used all the outputs, which means we have got no means to put any form of electronic boost control on this wastegate. So I've got a five PSI spring, which comes separately, because these are standard 10 PSI spring. And the idea would be is to have this gate pneumatically controlled uh, through like a little closed circuit the same way that a internal wastegate actuator would work on a you know like, like an oem spec turbocharger and uh, we'll just have this in like a closed loop and as soon as it sees five psi in the plenum there'll be a boost reference t here and then obviously it will just open up the wastegate and hopefully it will do the job i intend for it to do by bleeding off all the excess boost so we are only seeing five psi up here now i'm going to change the way that we're going to plumb this supercharger so here's where we are at now so we have a nice new big turbo from pulsar turbos thank you very much mark it's very much appreciated so this is our lovely new 48 49g for legal reasons i can't tell you that's the same as a garrett g 25550 you didn't hear me say that and then uh, so yeah that's our new turbo and then this is our supercharger so our supercharger has a air intake our turbocharger also has an air intake and our supercharger has a air outlet so what we're going to do 
is we are going to put a throttle body here. So that's our throttle body. And then what we're going to do is we're going to join the outlet to the supercharger and feed the supercharge boost into the turbocharger, creating a compound setup. Now, this is quite a big turbo compared to our old turbo, so we're probably not going to see this come onto full boost until maybe four, four and a half thousand RPM. So the idea would be is uh, we can utilize the supercharger to help spool the turbo sooner, but also pass the compressed air through there out the supercharger and obviously uh, over here would be our intercooler and obviously then it'll go to the engine so the idea would be is that this throttle body will be closed at low rpm and then at higher rpm when the turbo opens and this becomes a restriction on the turbo this throttle body will open and will allow the turbo to draw the air directly through the air filter this is uh, not quite engineering explained but i'm doing my best and then what we'll do here is we'll also t in what we'll do is we'll also t in the supercharger air intake before the bypass valve the secondary throttle body and then what we need to do is we need to bleed the boost off this supercharger so this is where the gfb wastegate is going to come into play and that's going to sit about there so that's a, that's the GFB race gate and then hopefully that'll be enough to bleed off the boost from this sort of assembly here and then we can either vent this to atmosphere because it's only compressed air or what we could do is we could feed it back into the, this uh, the intake from the supercharger and then create another recirculation loop. So hopefully you're following because uh, it is pretty confusing, but um, I'm not the best at explaining bits and bobs like that. So any questions, put them down below if I've not answered them by the end of this video. So here we are, back to the car. We need to do some fabrication. Now, I really want the wastegate to go here. Now, unfortunately, I can't put it straight off there at this angle because it's going to hit the uh, intercooler. So I really want this to sit vertical like this. A, so we've got easy access to change the springs, but also is I want GFB's products on show on the car. And uh, I think it'd be quite confusing when people look at the car at events and shows and sort of see two wastegates in this sort of scenario. Unfortunately, I can't put it there because uh, some idiot, me, um, put this pipe here so so we need to take off this pipe cut this we will then mount the uh, the wastegate where I want it to go and then we will then sort of start to reroute this uh, the air intake pipe for the supercharger now I hear you if you've not said it already is obviously wastegate is meant for high temperature environments so you get supplied stainless steel or steel flanges to weld onto your manifold we're welding to aluminum and so that puts me on to this next bit which is a extreme thank you to colin and gfb for sorting this out but gfb in australia have actually machined me a aluminium flange to the correct uh, drawings to match the uh, the wastegate um so yeah amazing really really thank you for that it's gonna that's certainly gonna help with this stage of fabrication so no doubt i've waffled on way too long you're here for fabrication so let's get at it
So we've reached a bit of a, a milestone in today's fabrication crusade and that is uh, we've finished up this lovely link pipe here from this little plenum and I fabricated this uh, hump back intake pipe to the turbo with a T in there to take up this uh, this feed from the pressurized side of the supercharger. The wastegate's all welded on, welded inside and out and I've put a little MPT threaded bottom here so we can put a fitting there for our boost reference for this wastegate. So next part we've got to do is to put uh, a valve on the end of this pipe. Now I'm not quite sure at this point on if I've already spoke about this earlier in this video but we're going to go through it again anyway. So my original plan was to use a, a Bosch style throttle body similar to what we've got there and to what we used as the bypass previously. So this is only a 44 mil valve, the turbo is a three inch intake so that would probably be quite a restriction on the turbo. Now I did order, I believe it was a 78 mil throttle body for a Porsche Can-Am um, or various different Porsches, also some Audis, Volkswagens, whatever. Uh, but it, the unit is physically too big to fit in the gap we've got in between the rocker cover and the slam panel. Now, if I was able to get rid of the headlights, I could have made it work, uh, but fortunately, we've got to keep OEM headlights, so that's not an option. So, rummaging upstairs, and what this is, is an exhaust bypass cut out valve. So, you'd usually put this on your exhaust system, you would have this on like a remote control fob and you can open up this valve on the button to uh, make your car extremely loud at the press of a button. But this valve will work in the space constraints that we've got. And uh, we've got a bit of gap there to get a hose clamp there on this silicon joiner where my thumb is. So this valve is perfect for the use that I need it to be. Couple of differences between the throttle body. So the way that this throttle body works is that you apply power to the motor and the more power you apply to the motor, the more the throttle body is uh, is held open. But these aren't meant to be held open at a constant state. And uh, I'm not quite sure if you can see that in the plug, you can see that what we've done is we've actually melted the uh, the plug from holding the throttle body open for extended periods of time, which is pretty much 100% all time on the way that we used to run this. However, this valve works slightly different. So you've got your typical positive and negative wires. And what happens is, is that if you apply 12 volts to the appropriate wires and the earth, the valve opens. When you remove the power, the valve remains open. To close the valve, you have to then switch the polarity. So you'd have to connect uh, your 12 volt to the black wire and the, uh, to the red wire, and then the valve closes. You remove the power, the valve remains closed. So apparently this is something to do with called half bridge motors. I don't fully understand vehicle electronics, I never claim to. Um, but basically what needs to happen is we need to be able to open this valve up at a set RPM and then as the revs drop below that set RPM is the, the how tech to swap the polarity of these two wires to be able to close the valve and uh, I've spoken with how tech and they said it can be done if not there is a relay you can buy uh, which does that job for you. So every time you send a signal to that relay, it automatically switches the polarity ready for when it gets switched again. So either way, we can make this work, whether it be the Howtech or the Howtech via a relay. I mean, it's probably gonna be far too late by the time this video comes out, but if you have got a better idea of what to use, drop a comment down below um, because you know I can change this pipe in the future so luckily this is stainless steel so we can actually roll this to our stainless steel intake pipe we use here yes it's stainless yes it's heavier than aluminium but it's all I've got that's got these tight radiuses to do this sort of hump back in such a short space. So yeah, let's get this welded on and we can then continue with the rest of the fabrication.
making pretty decent progress so far. Got the air filter on, got just enough room there for the air filter. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get it, get it any better than that, but I've got just enough of an aluminium bend here with enough space underneath to uh, create another T in there. And then what we'll do is we'll bring our intake tube for the supercharger inlet uh, through this gap here underneath the, uh, the valve motor. Now, I've took the headlight out to give me a bit of room, but I know that if I keep it sort of pointing in that direction there, we're going to be hunky-dory, and then I want to have uh, the silicon joiner sort of roughly in this area here, so it's easily accessible. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, I've already started to do this side of uh, the supercharger inlet, but it's quite difficult to have somewhere to point to. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to backtrack from this side of the air filter and give myself somewhere to aim for for the uh, to, re to then redo the top part of this tube here because most of it's okay, just need to sort out this tube here. So let's get cracking. <laughs> Okay, um, that's me done for today. I've actually been here since uh, nine o'clock this morning and uh, it's now 27. That's the, that's the lovely wife, by the way. So yeah, here is what we have achieved. Boom, look at that. It's looking like a, uh, a nice shiny mess of pipe work. So, uh, Hopefully you have been following along as this video has progressed. Let's just have a quick recap. So, now we've got it all done. It might be a bit more obvious to what we're trying to achieve than it was the diagram that I drew on the board earlier in this video. So, let's start here. We have got our air fill tour. We've got a little bit of aluminium elbow here into a electronic butterfly valve. At the bottom of this pipe, before the valve, is a secondary tube, which comes all the way through here. Pretty tight to get it in between um, all this part, the chassis and this other pipe that we've done. So that comes all the way down here into the inlet side of the supercharger. So that essentially is our cold side. And then at the bottom here, we've got our little plenum that we did last year. We have added a GFB EX38 wastegate. Why have we done that? Well, typically with a supercharger, you would go for pulleys. You would go smaller or bigger, depending on, on the boost level that you wanted to achieve. Now, these particular units, you can get a fixed pulley for them, but I really wanted to retain the electromagnetic clutch. So what we've got here is a EX38 with a 5 PSI spring inside. Now unfortunately we haven't got any more outputs on the Haltech to run a secondary boost controller. So this is going to run purely off spring and reference pressure alone. So I've put a little 
port in here and there'll be a little elbow in here with a vacuum pipe straight into the wastegate so when we see 5 psi of boost at this particular point here this wastegate will open and hopefully bleed off enough that we don't get any form of boost creep on this setup again it is an experiment um, I know Josh Thornton has a similar setup on his uh, K24 EG track car albeit that's a centrifugal clutch um, on the road tracks I believe it is or something similar uh, but this should still hopefully um, I'm hoping we'll have the same principle so yeah boost comes out into this plenum and finds its way up this pipe here which goes behind here and then tees into this particular pipe here at the bottom here and then obviously we have got our turbo charger so how is this going to work? Well, um, let's just, for example here, let's just set 4,000 RPM as a reference uh, target. So at low RPM, is uh, the supercharger will be turned on. So the supercharger will be spinning with the engine. This valve here will be closed. And then the supercharger will draw its air intake charge through this pipe into the supercharger and then blow its output into this pipe here through the turbo, blah, 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 into cooler, into the engine. So as the RPMs start to rise, and what we're anticipating is, is the supercharger will start to become a flow restriction for the turbo and will not allow the turbo to run to the best of its ability, essentially being strangled of air. So for argument's sake, and for a pretty simple example, is that at 4000 RPM is this valve will open, allowing the turbo to get its fresh cold air from the filter directly and not via the supercharger system. And then at that same RPM, or maybe slightly later, so maybe like 4500 RPM, is the clutch will disengage and then the supercharger will stop spinning allowing the turbo to uh, go on to full boost and then the turbo will take over the high RPM range of the car. So what we're hoping to achieve with this setup is basically no lag. The supercharger will deal with the low RPM, the turbocharger will deal with the high RPM. Now this is a different setup to how we set it up before. We had it set up sequentially and it was going to take a bit more dyno work to get working. Not impossible, but this way is much easier to get working correctly. So what will be happening in the lower RPM is we'll be running in a compound setup. And what that means is, is that we're taking pressurised air and forcing it into uh, another object which then recompresses that compressed air. There's some sort of uh, wizardry ratio. Um, uh, but what that's going to do is it's going to help spool this turbo at the crossover point so it, yeah it's it's hard to describe because i'm i'm pretty tired and i want to finish this video tonight but um air goes in wizardry happens happy faces and boost is the result and um, so yeah i'm going to call it here for this video um just purely as a fabrication montage of a video and then uh, we'll come back to you in the next video and hopefully um i've buttoned up the setup and we are on the dyno so uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around and um, hopefully you've enjoyed this new format of video. Um, I've actually gone for a, a paid premium music service. So hopefully the audio and the music was to your liking in this particular video. Um, any thoughts on the setup? Are you confused about anything with the setup? Drop a comment down below and uh, I will answer your question. So with that being said, thanks for watching as always. It's appreciated. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube nonsense for the YouTube abs. And obviously the most important thing is uh, go tell your nan. Love you nan. Bye.